Hey folks, everything new under the sun. Here is a first look um, of uh, this Outback Flex Max 80, apparently it is. Now I got this particular unit off eBay. I actually paid more for shipping than I did for the unit itself. I think I paid about 50 bucks for the unit, and it was about $60, I think, US to, to actually ship the thing. Now my first impressions, and I'll tell you the story, but my first impressions when I looked at it was, boy, this is big. Once I got a hold of this thing, this is a big heavy wide unit so that that's actually surprising me. I thought it was a little bit smaller and I'm going to be doing a comparison uh, of this up against the Midnight Classic 150 which I'll be receiving soon but like I said I got this for for cheap off eBay because it had been through a fire apparently and so all the dust you see um, I was told was from fire extinguisher um, powder and uh, indeed as I got it into it further that's what it, it appeared to be now the images on eBay didn't seem to indicate um, any massive unrepairable damage, um, but of course, you know the, the images were grainy, and I couldn't really tell. This is kind of just a look at the the outside of it and stuff. You can see uh, some burn marks on the other side with the sticker with some browning there, and of course, there's powder all over it. Um, I believe the Flexmax 80 is the one with the fan on top, so this does appear to be the 80, the FM 80 unit, which is the higher end unit that Outback, Outback uh, produces. The fan spins, it's a little crunchy, but probably because of all the dust, the buttons, you know, work fine. Um, but we're going to find out very shortly what exactly uh, is up with this. <clears throat> so this case itself is a very heavy uh, aluminum case. And so we're going to take a look uh, inside and uh, just see exactly what this reveals. So you may ask, why did I get a cheap, broken Outback FM80? off eBay. Well, I thought it would make for an interesting video to take a look and see if I could fix it and just to get some experience with this particular charge controller. Here's a look at the inside. Um, you can see some obvious uh, indications of melting. There was probably a short in some of the main wires coming in here. You can see the Ethernet jack and the phone jack are uh, melted on the bottom. You can see the top of the capacitor, the plastic is melted off it. Um, most significantly is that uh, wire mess in the back there. That's the wire that goes to the screen and uh, that ribbon cable is absolutely fried um, and the, the wires are just hanging out of it and you can just see uh, the whole thing is absolutely caked with with dust um, and uh, by the way uh, you can also see that the separator of plastic is all bent up there um, between um, the positive and negative terminals there. Um, I did research uh, fire extinguisher dry chemical dust and apparently it's Supposedly non-toxic, but it, what, it will irritate your hands, uh, possibly, and your lungs if it gets in there. So what I did, I decided to start taking it all apart. Once I saw that ribbon cable, then I, and that's something I couldn't really see from the image, uh, then I decided that I had to actually uh, get this thing apart. Um, and it's not, uh, it wasn't 100% clear what uh, exactly, or how exactly it came apart, but uh, eventually I did get it, I had to disconnect uh, the fan there. <clears throat> it's a very heavy unit because um, oh, the uh, what is it? The conductors, the the coils in there, the inductors, uh, whichever you call them, um, are quite heavy and quite large. So I finally got this thing out, and uh, of course the inside is absolutely caked. The back of the PC board, PCB board, uh, it's a little bit overexposed there, but you'll get a better image uh, in a bit. But everything is absolutely caked with uh, fire extinguisher. Uh, dry chemical and uh, so now the task becomes how do I actually get that top aluminum plate off and uh, there's a pile of screws you have to take off all the MOSFET screws all along the side there on the bottom um, as well as uh, some long screws um, all along the board here which I eventually figure out so these are the, the uh, all the MOSFET um, I believe that's what they're called, the little voltage regulators. Um, there's must be about 15 of them. I didn't count them. Um, all along the side, all um, attached flush with um, the aluminum housing, basically to dissipate the heat. So you got to take all of these screws out to uh, disconnect uh, basically the heat sink on those MOSFETs. Um, and that's part of the battle. Uh, and then, like I say, there are more long screws that go all the way through from the bottom all the way through to the top. And uh, so this is what uh, these screws are here. That I'm taking it. You can see how how long they, they are. It's a fairly sturdy construction. Uh, it does appear when I took this apart that someone had 
taken this apart and loosened some screws. I think someone had looked at it, taken it apart, see if they could resolve it. And I think by the time they got to that ribbon cable, um, they decided that it was probably too much uh, of a job um, to do. So here's a closer look at the inside. You can just see the, the dry chemical packed in there. I'm not sure how I'm going to clean this. I'm probably going to take it into the shower, to be honest, and just hose it right down with water. I have got not a lot to lose. Um, and after looking at that uh, ribbon cable, um, we'll see a little later. Um, that's the underside of the uh, LCD display there. I did notice that the uh, black wire was uh, pinched in the one of the screw holes for the fan. I don't know if that was before or after the, they took it apart. Um, but anyways, um, I think what I can do with that ribbon cable is actually cut it down and maybe put it back in place. So that was kind of the next thing. But you can see just the caking there. Um, if I shower this down, hose it down, and then I think I'll put it in my uh, dehumidifier just to kind of uh, dry it off real quick. And I think that will hopefully um, prevent any corrosion that could come uh, from all the water that I'm putting in it. I don't know a better way to clean it. It's just absolutely packed. I suppose I could go slowly with uh, some isopropyl uh, alcohol, uh, but there's just so much caked on here. I won't uh, submerge the LCD display, obviously, even if you're asking for trouble, but I think most of the components on the main PCB board are, are big enough, <clears throat> wide enough apart that I can um, kind of hose them down and, and, and dry them out um, enough that I can at least try and power it up after a, after a day or two in the dehumidifier to kind of get any uh, a residue of water off the PCB. In this clip, uh, we're going to take a closer look at the ribbon cable there. Right in the middle of the screen there, there's the ribbon cable connector. I think it's fairly easy if I chop the ribbon cable where it's not melted, I can then press the new ribbon cable back in there with the little cap that comes on it. So I think I can bypass the part that's melted. I'm hoping no resistors, etc. were blown because of the shorting out of this whole unit. Uh, but we're going to see. We're going we're gonna to try it out. We're going to see. If this doesn't work, I'll just uh, I'll sell it on eBay to the next guy. You can see there where I think I'm going to cut it underneath that big magnet um, to prevent interference on the on the wires there. Um, just cut it where, where it's not melted and then stick it back on the connectors. Um, if you look further below, um, you can kind of see all the components, all the wires, absolutely. If it comes into focus, just caked with uh, dust and debris from the uh, fire extinguisher. Um, again, I'm hoping none of the capacitors are blown, and they may be. Um, I just I have no idea the state of it, um, but I really have to get it washed up and back down to a clean scenario um, before I can actually try powering it up. So I think um, this will be part one of the video. Uh, I'll, the next step is going to be to put it through the shower and get it thoroughly dried out, and uh, then I'll um, start the video again, and we'll see where we can go from there um, to get this thing maybe working. Maybe even I'd like to even see it just light up, light, see the LCD screen light up. Um, that would be a win. Um, and uh, it may still be trash, but it's interesting nonetheless. And and uh, so I figured I'd, I I would try it out. So anyway, thanks for watching. That is the state of it now. Stay tuned for part two of the video where I go ahead and clean it and uh, and dry it out and maybe try and power it up.